Hello everybody, welcome back to Road Running Training Projects. It's Brandon Kroggy here. I use my vast amount of running knowledge and experience to help you guys with anything running related. So whether that's gear, training, coaching, you name it. But today, we're going to be talking about trail running. Alright guys, like most summers, I've been running a lot of trails. The main difference being is I had a camera this summer. So I grabbed some really cool footage. I didn't want to just use it in creative trail running videos. So I wanted to give you guys something with these videos. So I decided to use them in this video where I go over seven really important steps to run fast on the trails, whether you're uh, just getting started, maybe you're more advanced. Um, these will help you whether you're going downhill, uphill, flat, or a combination of all three of those. If you're uh, running some very technical trails or maybe you're running some less technical trails, it kind of applies to all general tra trail running. When it comes to the winter and other conditions like that, I'll go over those in a separate video. The winter video will come out later and whatnot. Basically, I use my vast experience trail running. I mean, I started running on the trails growing up in uh, Conifer, Colorado, which is up in the mountains. We have trails all the time. We run trails pretty much almost every every single run. We have at least maybe a little bit of trail up at the high school unless we're doing like some kind of workout. And even then, it was like sometimes we'd be running on... The trails or we'd run on the trail for a warm-up or whatnot. Um, after that, went to college. College went uh, was in Denver, Colorado, so it's a little bit different. We were so close to some trails, so I'd run them every once in a while, but less so in college. A lot more cement, uh, harder pack surfaces and stuff like that just because uh, we're in the city. But then after college, got more into trail running again, started doing some, did some trail racing and whatnot. So I'm gonna give you guys seven very important tips to kind of help you improve with your trail running. So let's dive right in. All right, the number one most important thing is don't be afraid. Whether you're going uphill, downhill, on the flats, doesn't matter. The obvious one is actually going downhill because I mean downhill uh, is kind of probably the most scary, scariest, the most scary for people. So when you're going downhill, you can lose uh, control, you can trip over rocks, everything's uh, happening so fast. I'll kind of go over a little bit more in depth as I go into the video, because it kind of plays into all my other tips. So basically, going uphill is actually going to be a, the fear of pain. So uh, going uphill, you're going to have your legs burning. Um, you're going to nerve because normally it's like they're long, steep uphills. So they're not short, typically. Sometimes, I mean, depending on the trail, sometimes there's more rolling hills. But still, you're going to feel that that leg burn, even on those like shorter hills. Uh, you're going to breathe a lot harder than normal. Especially if you're going up, like in Colorado, we've got those like uh, 14,000 feet peaks, 13,000 feet peaks that you're running up all the time. I mean, over the summer, I've, uh, as you guys will see, um, I've run above tree line a little bit too. So, I mean, that's above 11,000 feet and uh, quite frequently do that in Colorado. So, yeah, don't be afraid. And then the flats is kind of a mix. The flats are actually pretty mild for the most part. Uh, you just got to be aware so you don't trip. All right, so tip number two. You're gonna need razor sharp focus on the downhills and then also you need mental toughness on the uphills. So I kind of went over that a little bit earlier, but the razor, razor sharp focus, like you can't lose focus for one second when you're going downhill. Everything happens so quickly. There's always a different um, like a task at hand or a different thing you gotta have to deal with in terms of like there might be a, a couple of rocks and like obviously a different pattern than before or they're going to have like a really big rock all of a sudden come out of nowhere going to go around a corner and there's going to be like roots of a tree coming out. You got to be ready for anything. You got to be looking a couple steps ahead. So uh, raise a sharp focus, looking a couple steps ahead. That's all important. important. So this is, these are all some like housekeeping uh, tips at first, just kind of help you guys. Um, some like things to, just to remember in the back of your mind when you're running. I'll get it more into the like physiological or like forum tips as we get a little bit further in the video. Those will be some of my last steps, so stick around for those. Alright, so tip number three, be decisive. What I mean by that is you gotta be able to pick a line and stick with that line. And when we're looking at, I guess, lines or what I'm calling lines is when you're looking a couple steps ahead, you're gonna have like this like where you're gonna wanna place your feet. You're, it's kind of almost automatic if, uh, if you run trails quite a bit. So when I'm like looking at a trail, like a couple steps ahead, I already know where I'm gonna place my feet and I don't really have to think about it. I'm like, that just sounds like a good spot. And I'll go over that a little bit more again in the further in this video and the other steps about where you want to place your feet on a trail. But um, when you change your mind last minute and you pick like a new line, you don't actually, like your brain 
can't really, like you're already thinking about this line that you're taking, right? So if you're, you're half in on one line, but then you decide to go on this other line, a couple things can happen. That second line, you don't know what to expect there. You can cut, you can trip. Uh, there's some, there could be something in the way that you didn't see before. Uh, some other things that can happen, like when you're planting that foot to kind of change direction or to try to take that new line and you're not decisive enough, um, you can, it can cause you to land on your heels, plant that foot more and try to pivot or something. That can make you lose control on the ground as well, uh, especially if you're on a very gravelly surface like uh, my video earlier with Pike's Peak, as you guys seen in that, there's just tons of loose gravel and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, being decisive, key, key tip, key tip. All right, so tip number four is lean forward. And lean forward at the ankles, not the hips. So basically what I'm talking about, and we're kind of going like uphill is gonna mainly where we're gonna be seeing this. So a lot of people stick their butt out and they start getting this really bad form. It's actually their body kind of um, trying to compensate and trying to push that momentum forward. And um, when our bodies get tired, those like uh, little tiny hip flexor muscles and stuff can get pretty tired uh, before anything else really gets tired, like those bigger muscle groups. So then, yeah, those hips are normally like the first thing to start uh, going. And also because a lot of us sit around all day and we're not standing up all day, um, can also cause a lot of issues with keep running your hips for it. But that's gonna, that's just in general, a running form tip you gotta keep in mind. Um, but it's really important because it really gives that momentum or keeps the momentum going up the hills, also on the downhills and the flats and trail running. And trail running is a lot about momentum. Once you lose the momentum, it's a lot harder to get it back in trail running because you have to use a lot more power and strength to get any kind of movement in trail running because you have to be going over rocks, roots, going up on a very steep grades, stuff like that. So definitely leaning forward, definitely just trying to keep, keep that in mind. Practicing, practicing on this on the flats is very important. It really helps out. It really helps you focus enough for them without one, dying uphill, or two, on a downhill where you're more focused on just trying to stay upright. So it really allows you to focus on it and kind of work on that form more naturally. Also do this in during stride, just kind of lean into it, like from the ankles, and you lean from the ankles, lean, lean, lean. And like if you're starting a stride, uh, kind of lean and catch yourself almost. So when you're, when that first step is almost just catching yourself from actually falling on your face. So, um, but yeah, keeping those hips forward, and that's, that's the cues that you're looking for is uh, pushing those hips forward. Somebody pulling on the top of your head, kind of like you got a ponytail right there. I'll help you also stand up a little bit straighter too. And then yeah, again, practicing in strides, drills, so on. You guys get the point, I'm being a dead horse at this point. So uh, let's move on to downhill now. Why is it important in the downhill section? Well, as I said earlier, keeps your momentum going. Also gives you a different, like almost like, I don't know if you call that center of mass, but it, when you're leaning forward, more on the balls of your feet, uh, you're gonna have le more control over kind of like, I would say even at the, like the foot level. So. Like what I'm talking about is like if you're leaning back, let's say, right, going downhill, you land on that heel, it's gonna, most likely, if it's a loose, loose gravel or anything like that, you're gonna have a little more sliding of the foot and so on. So when you're leaning forward, you're gonna land, it's gonna come up, it's gonna hit the ground a lot quicker, come off the ground a lot quicker, which is also good for running faster, but also really good for, you want like a little contact with the loose gravel as possible. Because when you start putting on a braking motion, Normally that's a really bad thing going downhill, it makes sense, I mean, a lot of you guys have probably gone downhill. And it's actually, I feel like, sometimes harder to walk down a hill um, than it is to run down a hill because when you're walking down, your foot's on that slick surface for longer periods of time. So, um, also this kind of goes into winter running, but I'll go into that more later. Alright, my camera shut off me, I'm gonna go over the tip again. So tip number five actually kind of goes hand in hand with tip number four, and that's gonna be quicker turnover. So what quicker turnover can do is actually help you land more on the balls of your feet and lean forward because landing the balls of your feet and coming off are gonna be a lot more efficient than landing on the heels where it takes a lot more time to transition all the way through that gate. So uh, naturally, a quicker turnover will help improve you landing the balls of your feet typically and then also um, it goes the other way around. So what quicker turnover really does for trail running though is on the uphills, keeps you balancing that bob in motion that I mentioned earlier in the last video, link it above again. Um, but also on the downhills really gives you some options. So let's say you're coming up on this big gap. You want to be able to lengthen your stride out. So if you have your stride already too lengthened out, you can't lengthen it anymore. It's gonna be very difficult to lengthen it even more. So um, when it comes to those big gaps, you wanna be able to approach those, lengthen the stride out. But also if you're coming up on some like really big object and you're trying to, uh, you're coming up too fast on it or like 
you know, like in like three steps, I'm gonna be hitting that object. You can shorten up that stride a little bit, allow you to get over it, and uh, gives you just you know, it gives you that really good variety of options. You pick that line, but before you pick that line, you kind of plan your steps. Is kind of how I do it, and it, it almost happens naturally now. I'm like, I gotta shorten my steps up to get here. It's like uh, when I was coaching when I'm coaching into coaching hurdlers. So um, that's kind of how I coach typically like 300, 400 meter hurdles, or like if uh, you're coaching steeplechase where you're coming up on that. Uh, you're maybe like 10 steps out, then you start planning on what you want to do. It's like, I'm about 10 steps out. I know in about uh, seven steps I can get here or so. And then you, you kind of plan and like, if you know you're going to come up too close to that hurdle or steeple, you quicken that uh, turnover a little bit and you'll, uh, you'll come over. Or if you're going to be too far, maybe you have to lengthen that stride out a little bit. So that's why I always kind of keep my, hur my hurdlers from um, getting like, lengthening the stride out too much in between the hurdles but keeping a nice quick turnover. Turnover is crucial in, hurdle, in hurdles, especially 110s, but 300s it's more for that planning because you're not going to always have the same step count coming up in the hurdle. But that's besides the point. Um, for trail running it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of, I, I, I think where like even steeplechase even came from was kind of like a more of a trail running kind of background and stuff like that. So very important to have those options with a quick turnover. So let's kind of move on to tip number six. All right, tip number six is going to be all about arms. So your arms aren't just used to protect your face when you're falling, but they're also used to kind of uh, going up hills to kind of help you get up those hills, give you a little bit of bob again, mentioned in that last video. Um, but yeah, prevent you from uh, using up too much energy too. So a nice short arm swing, nice little, gives you a little bit quicker turnover as well gives you a nice little bob going up the hill and conserves energy. But on the downhills, you want to drop those arms down a little bit that instead of having your center of mass up a little bit higher because your arms are shorter, you're going to have that uh, center of mass down a little lower, 90 degrees or so, maybe even lower depending on the person. Um, but yeah, for me being 6'4", it's really nice to drop my arms because I can really feel that difference in, the center of, in my center of mass when I'm on the um, downhill or I'm making, picking up my lines or whatnot and I'm trying to like tick a corner especially. Just having those lower arms and then with the corners and the lower arms, um, the inside arm needs to shorten up a little bit and then you kind of, I kind of like almost like lengthen that outside arm. It help, helps you kind of maybe lean into a little bit more and gives you that uh, momentum to kind of get around that corner as well. Another thing I guess just while we're talking about corners is when we're on a corner, try to uh, take it and like uh, lean into that corner, but also you get up on the bank. So like, you know, most corners have that like if you're on like a really steep switchback or whatever, have that kind of bank. Kind of use that bank to its full advantage. You kind of go up it a little bit. So like you, if you were to watch downhill mountain bike racing, for example, or like uh, those dirt bike races or whatever, those guys use those banks to their full potential. Or even if you're watching like an indoor track, they'll come up on the bank just a tiny bit and then they'll come back down. So it's very important to use those banks to their full potential um, or you're going to go right off the corner <laughs> or lose your traction. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Tip number seven, and final tip, oh, seven. All right, so tip number seven is shoot for more solid surfaces. In the winter, this can differ, but in the summer, we wanna shoot for those as solid surfaces as we can get on. So uh, typically when you're in the summer, you're not gonna be wearing any like kind of spikes or anything that are gonna cause issues on solid surfaces, but you're gonna have that very tacky Rubber on the bottom of the shoes just grips super well on like rocks, for example. When I'm running, as you guys will see, I'm always shooting for these rocks. It just gives me a lot better traction. Um, I don't go excessively out of my way though to hit the rocks. I'll stay on the dirt if I have to, but I try to hit as many solid surfaces to kind of keep my traction. Um, and then also uh, just gives you just a lot more control over uh, where you want to go and and so on. So I mean, and also you're not going to step in like a hole or anything like that uh, if you're stepping on rocks because you can actually see those a little bit better. So that was... Alright guys, that sums up my seven tips. I'm sorry about that. I was super rusty. Uh, it took so many takes. It's, this the video took me forever. Um, but done now. I'm going to call it good. I think it's good enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and uh... Comment below if you guys have any more questions about trail running because I might not have answered it in this video. I might make another one uh, coming up here soon. Actually, I'll probably just make that winter one uh, coming up here soon. So you guys can get these same kind of tips, but more geared towards winter running. 
Stay tuned for that. Again, subscribe to the channel if you want to get that. Hit that notification bell if you guys want to get updates when I post new videos, which is going to be more consistent recently. And let me check my notes. Let me check my notes. Oh, yeah, I'll be posting that uh, trail video. The full trail video uh, of the some of the footage I got at Never Summer. Uh, a later date, pretty soon, coming up here. Um, no promises though, because I do have another wedding I have to shoot, so I gotta shoot that first, edit it, and then I'm guessing by mid-September though. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you guys later. That's trailing on. A little close, a little closer to the moose. That's a powerful moose. All right, I think I'm gonna stop here. Those clouds aren't looking too promising, especially in that direction. I don't know which way it's moving. It's better safe than sorry. Just wanna see this view really quick. Let's take it all in. Nice thing about having a GoPro. I can look back at this, won't be the same, but.